Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Mission Media tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at some tricks that I like to use to sort of spice up footage and really make it look like poppy and wow. A lot of these things we kind of touched on inside of my bold skins look tutorial, but we're gonna kind of go over some more stuff I like to do and sort of my thought process behind it. So without further ado, let's hop into DaVinci Resolve and let's let's get cracking. So here we've got this flat piece of footage here. Um, approaching this just like I would normally. The first thing I would do is crank the saturation all the way up because I like really saturated stuff and DaVinci Resolve does not saturate stuff a whole bunch. Next thing I'm gonna do is hit Alt F to kind of open up the viewer a little bit. I'm gonna contrast this down just a little bit by using the lift controls. I'll get my black point to where I want it. I'm referencing some scopes off to the side of my uh, screen over on my left hand monitor there to make sure I'm not clipping stuff too hard. Then I'm going to bring the gain kind of way up. I'd like to bring the gain up probably a little bit more than I should. I like to really kind of make the highlights pop out. You see, that's already done a lot. So you can hit Alt D before and after. You see, it's still not quite saturated enough. Let's, you know, take care of that in just a bit. Also going to bring this guy up a bit. Bring this down just a little bit more. Then I'm going to hop over to uh, our color match here. We can do color boost. And what this does is it really kind of pops it out. It works just like uh, another saturation control. I think it was supposed to do stuff like uh, Adobe's vibrance control, but it doesn't. So, you know, there's that. Next thing I'm going to do is bring up the shadows just a little bit because I really like to get a lot of localized contrast there. As you can see over in the scopes of these kind of two areas, there's this kind of darker area at the bottom. and I'm trying to pull contrast out so we uh, kind of have as much oomph and dynamic range there as possible. We talk about that a little bit inside of my dynamic range tutorial. And then we've also got this kind of sky area where there's already a bunch of stuff. So trying to sort of as best we can without making the footage completely break apart since this is only 10 bits. If you're using like 16 bit footage or something ridiculous and you could really, really kind of pull these apart and make it really cool. But you know, I don't have a Sony F65 on me. If anyone would like to give me $95,000 or however much that camera is, I would be happy to accept it and, you know, buy that camera and make you whatever tutorials you wanted to. You know, just email me at theo at meastermedia.com if you would like to donate $95,000 to the camera fund. Uh, so in kind of still beefing up this contrast, we'll go back to our color wheels and bring our lift down just a little bit more. And we'll go and bring our highlights up some or shadows up some. You see, we're just kind of fighting ourselves a little bit here, but it's really helping to pull the contrast out there so we can still get detail without having to, you know, sacrifice dynamic range, if that makes sense. The next thing I'm going to do is this is a, a pretty good, like, start, I guess. It's still a little bit boring, but I'm going to start adding secondaries. And the way I like to do secondaries is I like to sort of do all of them in parallel unless there's a specific reason for me to do them in ser serial. Like if I have parts of stuff overlapping each other and I want them to react a different way. But for most stuff, parallel nodes work fine and they look really cool. So, you know. So for this first one, I'm going to kind of concentrate on the sky. And I'm just going to use a graduated filter here under the Windows tab. Just bring this up all the way to the top and then grab and then pull the gradient down. Hop back over to our color wheels and we'll pull the lift way down, way down. You see over in our scopes, we're sort of, like we were talking about before, making these two areas sort of meet up some to really kind of make it explode. And that's looking pretty good. Getting these clouds pretty dark up here while, you know, not destroying the landscape. I just like to push the gain back up some so it's not just dark. Ooh, that's a little bit nuclear. All right, so there we go. Pull this down some. Not really. Excellent. So now I've got that looking good. Like this is, you know, sort of like normal, I guess, kind of dramatic, you know, big landscape looking cool. Great. This is still a little bit hot in here. Let me pull the gamma down a little bit. The gain down just a smidge. It's a little bit wild. All right. Uh, but now I'm going to add sort of like fake light leaks. It's either a love or a hate relationship with them. Like there's not too much in between, but I find that people really like it when I put them in there because it it makes it look like things that they can't see with their normal measly human eyes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a circle window. And I know that the sun's kind of coming out over here. So I'm going to make this a kind of big blurry yellow spot. I'm not going to try and recreate a sun. I'm going to make it look like the sun is kind of like 
super bright and like overpowering my lens and bouncing around all in there and kind of like leaking in from the side. Uh, I'm sure that I'll watch this back in a couple of years and I'll think, Theo, what were you doing? But for now, you know, people seem to like it. So I'll take this and I will change my offset and just make it a little bit too warm. And then I will feather this out. Good deal. And I can see already that's like a little bit more interesting looking. So without that, let me just turn off the windows here. Without it, it's kind of the same thing here. You add like some color contrast in there and it kind of brings it up some. I'm going to add another corrector node in here. Move these out of the way. Add another input to our parallel node and connect these guys up. And what I'm going to do is sort of balance this previous thing that we did out on the other side with some uh, blue light leak type thing. So I'm going to use another circle window and make sure we can see our windows. I'm going to kind of bring it, you know, just literally to offset it. And we did this same sort of thing inside of my skins look tutorial like I talked about before, but it's something I like to do. So we're gonna kind of talk about some more. And what this will do is I'll just make it a little bit blue, nice with the offset. What that does is it creates some color contrast, like how we were creating luminance contrast before down in the bottom area, kind of localized luminance contrast. Here we're creating a sort of bigger color contrast, which makes it more interesting. People like contrast despite, you know, hipster looks like we did before. If you want to check out this tutorial, you know, annotation on the screen also. So now I've got that. And now if you want to kind of make it even more kind of mushy and interesting, you can go over to your circle windows and go over to our blur and sharpen tab and just kind of blur these out. Uh, it just mushes it up really cool. It's almost like a tilt shift effect, but not. And then if you do that, the image is kind of starting to lose focus a little bit, especially this one in my mind. So I'm going to kind of figure out where I want people to be looking and I'll highlight that a little bit. So I'm seeing my eyes already kind of being drawn over to this hill. It was kind of moving to the side a little more than I want it to. So I've got two options. I can either kind of brighten and contrast and saturate and et cetera, et cetera, this part up, or I can darken this part. And since like the sun's over here, I'm not going to darken this part. I'm just going to kind of highlight this part that I want people to be looking at. So I'm going to add another corrector node and link that up again. And from here, I'll add another circle window. You could use, you know, whatever type of window you want. But I like to use circle windows a lot, especially for kind of big global stuff like this. So here, this going, let's pull out the feathering a good bit because this is just sort of big, kind of big brush strokes, painting with light, making a more interesting image. Put that there and we'll bring our gamma up some, bring our gain up some, not that much. That's a bit. And bring our lift back down to kind of even it out. Bring that down just a little bit. Just sort of contrasting that. Maybe even add just a smidgen of saturation. Maybe kind of do something with the color, except not really. You know, from here, now you can see like your eyes being drawn right to this spot. There's, you know, a little bit of distraction up here that I could probably figure out some way of getting rid of besides, you know, just turning off the layer. You know, boom. But for now, like uh, if we look at before. And after we've really made something, you know, big and and artsy and surreal. And it's probably not for every image, but you can see, especially uh, sort of, you can see what I was doing with the scopes too, how you know it's all sort of one big jumbled mess now, instead of these kind of two discrete areas, we really pulled it all apart as best we could and made sure that everything we can is displayed on screen in as much loudness as possible. And if that's what you're looking for, that's normally what I'm looking for. I just want to make something as like, you know, extreme and bold as possible because that's sort of an aesthetic that I'm really liking right now. But if that's not your thing, you know, you don't have to do it. Or you can even do it this way and then, you know, hit Alt S and then you can dial it down a bunch. You can go back to your curves, a low soft, high soft, and desaturate it a bit. And you just got this kind of like, it doesn't know what it is sort of image. But it's like, uh, you know, it's an interesting change. And now you know how to do that. Anyway, I hope you like this tutorial. If you did like it, be sure to give it a like. If you didn't, be sure to give it a dislike. If your feelings are slightly more complicated than that, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I always love reading the comments. If you want to see more stuff from Eastern Media, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check out the social media links in the description and go to the website at www.meesternmedia.com. Uh, the downloads tab's got some free stuff for you guys, some power grades, some lookup tables, some music. I'm just always trying to upload stuff as I can to there because, you know, free stuff is cool. 
If you think your friends might be into this tutorial, be sure to share it on your various social platforms. Once again, I've been Theo with Meese New Media. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.